Dear learners, I am Dr. Sudeshna introducing the module on Approaches to Women's Development before you. This module talks about the need for incorporating women in development discourse. It gives fairly detailed description of various developmental and empowerment initiatives adopted for women world over. Apart from description, the module also exposes students with drawbacks of these approaches and their proposed alternatives. Finally, with examples from around, the module sensitizes them to understand the need for maintaining balance between developmental needs, gender equity and environmental sustainability. Since post Second World War, development has become a buzzword in the global political economy. It has become a weapon in the hands of powerful and rays of hope for the powerless. Since inception till 1970s, development has been considered as gender neutral and like all other socio-political issues, women were kept out of its ambit. During the second half of the 20th century, feminist movements questioned the notion that women's contribution are limited only to the reproductive works of childbearing and caretaking. The economic or productive value of women's work, its invisibility and non-recognition gained momentum during 1970s from the study on women's role in economic development by Esther Bosserup, which gave path-breaking inputs to the report submitted to the UN General Assembly on the role of women in development. These had inspired the first International Women's World Conference held at Mexico City in 1975 followed by declaration of 1976 to 1985 as the United Nations Decade for Women. In India, the concept of women and development was introduced for the first time during the sixth five-year plan, that is 1980 to 1985. All these initiatives contributed in emphasis on women-centered issues around the world, improved educational and employment opportunities for women, increasing gender equality in political and social participation, increased access in health and welfare services, identification and recognition of gender-based violence, and acceptance of violation of women's rights as violation of human rights. Dear learners, understanding the concept of women's development requires understanding the shift in idea from woman as passive recipient of development to the woman as important economic contributors. During 1950s, women were hardly regarded as important contributors to the development of the society. The assumption was that the benefit of economic development would trickle down to families through the male breadwinners. Impact of development was gender neutral and women were regarded as passive recipients. Hence, initial priorities were accorded to maternal health, child health, and nutritional needs of mother and child. Feminist research exposed that the women were the world's poorest of poor and most vulnerable, and thus the focus began to shift from providing basic needs to improving the economic status of women. The program geared up in the direction of economic improvement mainly through education, vocational trainings, employment opportunities, and so on. Economist Esther Bosarab's work demonstrated that ignoring the economic contribution of women by governments were detrimental to the national development. Her study also showed that development had different impacts on women and men. For example, agricultural mechanization, industrialization, urbanization, assumed to benefit everyone, but actually increased the workloads for women 
and made greater demands on them as producers and casual laborers. In this light, keeping above points in mind, we will shift our attention to various approaches to the women's development. First, we will talk about the Women in Development or WID approach. This approach mainly sought to integrate women into the development process. Esther Bosarab's work was a catalyst to women in development movement. This approach incorporated women specific projects into already existing development processes. Strategies incorporated under WID approach are adding women's component in the existing one or creation of new women centric projects, increase of women's income and productivity, improving women's ability to look after the household. In spite of the initial funfare, WID had failed to provide necessary push in incorporating women within the doctrine of development due to following reasons. First, WID failed to tackle the unequal gender relations and said little on women's subordination and exclusion and did not address gender discrimination, the root cause preventing women's full participation in their societies. Second, WID approach seemed to associate women's status with income or monetary contribution. Third, WID approach did not address the gender stereotyped expectations of men. Next, WID approach downplayed the third world woman's contribution in household production, in formal economy and in political activities. The views of WID regarding women's productive employment and emphasis on shifting from traditional sector to modern sector was criticized as it viewed traditional role performed by women as regressive. Dear learners, now we will move to next approach that is women and development or WAD approach. The WAD or WAD approach was actually the result of world plan of action from Mexico's first world conference on women which took place on 1975. This approach suggested that involvement of women is the integral part of development rather than supplying development aid to women. This approach suggested women only projects to counter patriarchal hegemony. WAD approach argued that class structure were more oppressive than the gender and that poor marginalized women had more in common with men of their own class rather than with women of another class. WED approach also pointed out that development projects according to the WED approach would increase the demands on women without increasing access to resources or decision making power and thus increase women's workload. WAD approach also faced criticisms from various corners. They are the main criticism was that WAD's woman only development project would be a failure in the long run due to the marginalized status of women. WAD approach addressed women as a class and failed to focus on diverse background that is intersectionality of women such as religious, ethnicity and so on. Similar to WID approach, the WAD approach did not fully consider the relation between patriarchy, modes of production and marginalization of women. WAD approach while concentrating on women's productive role has least considered the reproductive and cultural aspect of women's life. Our next approach will be gender and development or GAD or GAD approach. Dear learners, a revolutionary way of development was proposed through the gender and development approach. GAD approach for the first time recognized 
development can impact women and men differently. Hence, it emphasizes that both men and women must be involved in identifying problems as well as in finding appropriate solutions respectively. With WID or Women in Development approach, the dominant rationale for women's development program was increased efficiency, mostly what women can do to accelerate development. But gender and development approach emphasized on what development can do for women. This approach pointed out that women have been systematically subordinated and assigned secondary or inferior roles to men and their needs have been considered in isolation from the larger context. So the strategies incorporated under GAD approach are GAD refocused attention on gender from women. The new focus on gender grew out of observation that women's development projects had not been successful in improving women's conditions, mainly due to social and cultural constraints. They sought to make women an integral part of every development strategy. It was thought that development projects would become more efficient by decreasing women's reproductive workload, that is lightening household responsibilities, through better access to water, fuel, etc., and by increasing their productive efficiency, that is through income generation, access to training, credit worthiness, and so on. Next, with GAD, the rationale for conducting women's development program began to shift from efficiency to equity and empowerment approach. Development started addressing strategic gender needs rather than the mere practical needs. So now we need to understand what is practical gender need. Practical gender needs are a response to immediate perceived necessity identified within a specific context. They are practical in nature and often address inadequacies in living conditions such as water provision, health care and employment. They are needs shared by all household members, yet identified as practical gender needs of women who assume responsibility for meeting this need for the entire family. While strategic gender needs are the needs women identify because of their subordinate position in the society, they vary according to particular context related to gender division of labor, power, and control may include such issues as legal rights, domestic violence, equal wages, and women's control over their own bodies. Meeting strategic gender needs assists women to achieve greater equality and change in existing roles, thereby challenging women's subordinate position. However, GAD approach was not free from criticisms. Critics claimed GAD approach has been emphasizing the social differences between men and women while neglecting the bonds between them and also the potential for change in the existing role. Although GAD perspective is theoretically distinct from WID and WAD, but in practice the program seemed to have the elements of the two. GAD failed to look carefully into the social relation aspect and as a result this approach lacks explanation on how social relations undermine the programs directed at women. For example, we can say the control of husband were the wife's decision. GAD approach does not provide clarity on the types of trade-off women might be prepared to take so as to achieve their ideals of balancing productive, that is economic activities with marriage and motherhood. Finally, gender mainstreaming is often based on a single normative perspective as 
synonymous to woman ignoring the others. For example, we can see gender is not synonymous with the woman only, transgender or men are also part of it. Following table will give you a snapshot of major projects initiated for women's development, nature of the problems they have addressed, solutions they have initiated and developmental interventions they have proposed. Here we have dealt with concepts like welfare approach of 1950s followed by economic self-reliance approach of 1960s, efficiency approach of 1970s and equality approach and empowerment approach of 1980s. 1990s saw the emergence of various alternative approaches which were mainly arising out of the third world developing countries. Alternative approaches propose an alternative way of viewing how development has evolved out of grassroots experience. This alternative view is based on interactions at the local level. Further, they believe that ideas and policies are shaped by everyday practices rather than by the dominant development theory. There are many examples like Bangladesh Gramin Bank, Self-Help Women's Association or Seva Movement in India, which clearly show that this, these grassroots movements result in empowerment of poor women. Alternative approaches emphasize that women should be the agents of development. Now we will move on to our next section. The table will show you the comparative parameters of top-down, that is mainstream developmental approach and bottom-up that mainly represent the participatory alternative approaches for development. Different developmental goals are synthesized under the Millennium Development Goals which we term as MDGs. MDGs are eight international development goals that were established following the Millennium Summit of the UN in 2000 to mitigate gender imbalance and to usher in a just world order by 2015. These are again rephrased under 17 sustainable developmental goals. They are first to eradicate extreme poverty and hunger, second to achieve universal primary education, third to promote gender equality, fourth to reduce child mortality, fifth to improve maternal health, sixth to combat HIV AIDS, malaria and other diseases, seventh to ensure environmental sustainability and finally to develop a global partnership for development. Dear learners, now we will move on to sustainable development, another alternative mode of development. The term sustainable development was brought into common use by the World Commission on Environment and Development, popularly known as the Brundtland Commission. In its seminal report published on 1987 called Our Common Future. According to the Brundtland Commission, sustainable development is development that meets the need of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. In India, sustainable development is both a challenge and an opportunity. Successful development will inevitably involve some amount of depletion of natural resources resulting in environmental damage. We have to maintain the much needed balance. The salient features of sustainable development includes it is alternative design for development which by definition should be environmentally benign and eco-friendly to ensure that the productive assets available to the future generations are not unfairly diminished. Those who enjoy the fruits of economic development today must not make future generations worse off by excessively degrading Earth's exhaustible resources 
and polluting Earth's ecology and environment. There is a symbolic relationship between consumerist human race and the producer, the natural systems. Environment and development is not mutually exclusive, but essential to sustainable development and healthy economy. Sustainable development has two major aspects, internally sustainable development and externally sustainable development. And without both, no real sustainable development could exist. Sustainable development is accountable to the poor and hence it should ensure that poor should have adequate access to sustainable and secure livelihoods. Environmental degradation affects women more than the men as they are the primary providers for the family. Like all over the world, women of India took leading role in environmental sustainability movements. Following pictures of Narmada and Chipko movement are self-explanatory. Next issue will be covered is women's empowerment and its inalienable relationship with development. The chronology of development discourse depicts that by mid 1980s, the term empowerment becoming popular in the field of development, especially with reference to women. Women's empowerment includes both a personal strengthening, enhancement of life chances and collective participation. It helps to achieve equality of opportunity and equity between genders, ethnic groups, social classes and different age groups. It enhances human potential as individual and social levels of expressions. Empowerment is an essential starting point and continuing process for realizing the ideals of human liberation and freedom for all. According to Kamla Bhasan, noted Indian feminist writer, empowerment of women means many things. They are recognition of women's contribution and women's knowledge, helping women to fight their own fears, feeling of inadequacy and inferiority, enhancing their self-respect and self-dignity, controlling their own bodies, help them in becoming emotionally independent and self-reliant, controlling resources like land and property, reducing burden of work, especially within the home, and creating and strengthening women's groups and organizations. Dear learners, the following diagram will explain the process of empowerment. This tape arises out of awareness building about the situation such as inequality, discrimination, rights and oppressions. Further collective awareness is required for building a sense of group solidarity. Next step is capacity building or skill development to plan, organize, take group decisions, manage and carry out the action plans by utilizing the available resources and opportunities. Capacity building also includes leadership training for potential members. The next step will be followed by participation. Participation is the major aspect in the process of empowerment. A great amount of exposure to the various events and causes are made available only when there is participation. This will enhance the decision making power of the group and also will strengthen the group's identity for a particular cause. Final stage is the action for change which is the result of all the above mentioned processes. The change ultimately is the stepping stone of any empowered group. Dear learners, now we will discuss various approaches to women's empowerment. Srilata Batliwala has summarized major approaches to women's empowerment as integrated development approach, these women's empowerment approach basically tries to tackle 
issues like abject poverty, lack of access to education, employment, health care and resources that are considered to make women powerless. This approach employs integration of factors that would raise women from a powerless position towards a path of development. Hence, identifying the cause of women's powerlessness becomes the first step before applying this approach. Integrated development approach provides a package to alleviate poverty, meet basic survival needs, reduce gender discrimination and help women to gain self-esteem. The package could be in the form of literacy program, health program, legal programs and so on, where women participate through their collectives, they further build their capacity in tackling social issues such as dowry harassment, alcoholism, etc., which finally brings social change. Proshika program of Bangladesh, Seva program in India are good examples of this type of empowerment. Next, we will concentrate on economic development approach. This approach focuses on economic development of women. This approach considers that economic power in the hands of women can bring equality. The control of material resources can help in tackling the issue of subordination and further would lead to strengthening the economic security. In this approach, women form groups around savings, credits, etc. Income generation activities through skill training are the popular strategy adopted under this approach. Thus, such strategy also sustains the group strength. Example, Bangladesh Gramin Bank, Lizard Papar in India. These groups also provide ancillary support services like child care, health services, literacy program, legal education and aid. Next approach will be the consciousness raising and organizing approach. This approach tries to focus on women's awareness. It is perceived that women's lack of awareness regarding the dominant attitudes of male has led to their subordination. Under this approach, women's collectives consciously struggle for greater access to resources. This approach does not meet the immediate practical needs as it does not provide the schemes and services. Instead, the women are strategically empowered to strive and address their positions. These positions will ultimately give them the ultimate decision making at higher levels. As for example, reservation in local governance, Mahila Samakya, etc. Now we will discuss the final approach that is change approach. This approach considers women's empowerment is also a process of establishing control over resources. But the degree of control will depend on some factors like income level, poverty, education, social norms, values and so on, where patriarchy is predominant. Customary male dominance towards women is the major hindrance in the pathway of women's empowerment. For this reason, a comprehensive and coordinated approach comprising the existing three approaches of women's empowerment would be needed to empower women where special focus would be given on changing the attitudes of males towards women. Following diagram will show the two different empowerment approach and their thrust areas, namely human development approach developed by Amartyasen and mainstream truck structural approach. Now screen will show two case studies. One is based on political empowerment of rural Indian women. The second one is based on 
economic success of Sri Mahila Griha Udyag, popularly known as Lizjat Papar. Lizjat Papar is creation of a group of uneducated women. Membership has also expanded from an initial number of seven sisters from one building to over 43,000 sisters throughout the India. These success stories prove nothing is impossible for women when right kinds of intervention and initiatives are made available to them. Thus, at the end of this module, we can summarize that since inception, development is a gendered activity. Only with conscious efforts, it has transformed from gender blindness to the gender inclusivity. We have also learned that any one approach to development or empowerment is not sufficient to resolve these complex issues with differential needs based on gender, class, religion, culture and many more variables, our developmental priorities change. Development policies must recognize these differential needs. Since the issue are rooted in the social structure, a holistic intersectional strategy is required to do away with gender bias developmental paradigm. Real challenge for a developing country like India lies in balancing development, environmental sustainability and gender justice. Thank you for your patience and cooperation.